My name is uh, Eric Wilkins, and I have presented with me Justin Grote, John. And today we are going to talk about how we make the network work. So, just real quick overview of us. Um, I work as a system engineer for really. I focus on two things. I focus on system architecture and information security, and both of those take quite a bit of, of thought and effort. If you think about securing our data and how we design systems, and Justin. I work on the transport end. I make data work move from one end of the network to the other. So we're going to wrap our whole presentation around those two main themes. So here's what we want to talk to you about today. We want to talk a little bit about network components, okay? What makes up a network, right? If we're going to talk about making it work, what's doing the work? We also want to talk about this common thing that people get confused, bandwidth versus speed. Then we're going to run over and take, you know, okay, that's cool. You told us there's a difference, but what does speed really mean? Because it has to mean something because I keep hearing about internet speed. Well, what does that mean to me? We'll do some demo. Um, as you can see, we're going to have kind of some fun with this. And then, of course, we'll open it up for questions that anybody might have. So let's take a look first at our network components. And again, I broke this down into three sections. Transport, data services, and end users. So as we think about transport. We're talking about items over here that Justin has out a wireless modem. And of course, we're all probably pretty, you know, we see the little antenna kind of tells us it's wireless. We have switches. We can plug multiple devices in. And we have a router, which kind of looks like a big square box. Okay? So this moves it from one network to another network. This we use inside of our network. And this we use to connect our wireless devices. Now, as far as data services, it's kind of hard to show you a server because they're big and weigh a lot and then I'd strain myself. Storage, right? We store data somewhere, correct? Well, that's part of data services. And then there's the infamous cloud. Where is the cloud? What is the cloud? Who is the cloud? The cloud is the cloud. Any questions? Really, the cloud is simply online storage. Okay? It's not local to my tablet. It's not local to my laptop. It's not local to my cell phone. And all three of these things are end user devices, correct? So as I'm working on this, I'm communicating with the transport. I'm communicating with the data services. Also, I can use my end user devices so that all works in tandem. Okay? We need all of these components to help make our network work for us. Now, bandwidth and speed. This gets confusing for people, so I broke it down in, into this. Bandwidth is simply the amount of data that can go through at a time. Think about a road. We've all driven two-lane roads. We've driven four-lane roads. If you go out east, you've seen six- and eight-lane roads. If you go out to California, some are even bigger than that, right? So that's the amount of traffic or data that can flow, right? So the bigger this is, if it's 10, 20, 30, 40, right? Single lane, double lane, okay? That's the amount of traffic that can flow through at a time. So speed is essentially how fast does that data go? Think of speed like a speed limit, okay? If I have a two lane road, that has a 60 mile an hour speed limit, data's moving pretty quick. I can't put a lot of data down it, but the data that I do put down it goes pretty fast. If I have a four lane road, I put more data through at a time, but if the speed limit is 40 miles an hour, it's not going as fast, right? Because we've all been on this, right? We're driving down the road, it goes from 60 to 40 to 30, same amount of traffic, but it slows down, okay? So that's really what the difference is between bandwidth and speed. Bandwidth being the amount of data we can go through, speed being how fast we can get that data through, good? So Arvig overall, what you get and the speeds you can get depends on where you live because of the technologies that are available in our different communities. But in a general overarching sense, the generalized rules, and I stress generalized because every location is slightly different. If you're running DSL, okay, 
anywhere from 10 to 20 meg. That's your, your speed, right? How fast. Here it's also your bandwidth. It's how much data you're going to be able to push through. Cable modems are, they say 25. A lot of them are now going uh, the ability up to 50. But I'd rather err on the side of being a little more conservative. And fiber is anywhere from uh, 50 meg to 100 meg. Um, and in Melrose, we actually have the capability of doing gigabit, which is 1,000 megabits per second. Hmm? Melrose. Gigabit. So it's 1,000 meg instead of 100 meg. Uh, most residential are somewhere between the 10 and the 50. Okay. So one of the things that people often um, deal with, in fact, I deal with it in my own home, is you know, I live out in the country and I have DSL and I have 9 meg. Okay, that's fine if it's just me doing something on the internet. But let's think about this. When I go home at night, I have an iPad automatically connects to my wireless access point. I have my smartphone, which obviously connects automatically. I get on my laptop, it connects automatically. I have my smart TV. All these things are connecting to the same internet connection. So now, instead of you know, just one device being able to use that single lane road really fast, now I've got four devices. Okay? My daughter decides she's going to start streaming Netflix. My son decides he's going to play online game. Um, through either the Wii or, or the iPad or the laptop, right? And I'm trying to, to work on something. Well, what happens? That pipe, right? And if we think about, when I say pipe, if we think about it like this, 10 meg, right, as we talk about them, not very big, right? I can push some data through it. 25 meg, more, right? 50. I put a lot more through, right? Well, here's what ends up happening. And what we're kind of finding in generalized in homes, somewhere between 25 and 50, depending on the number of people and devices in a home, is pretty optimal, especially if you have teenagers that are online, Facebook, Netflix, social media, and all of these things, because it takes a lot of capacity, right? So the bigger, the more you can put through. Now, let's think about this in a demonstration mode. If it's just me and I have a device, now watch when it ends, stops pouring, and it's done there, almost simultaneously. Very fast, right? One device, not that much to do. Now, what happens when I put two devices and try not to spill water everywhere. Now, I have somebody streaming Netflix and I have somebody playing online games. Watch the bottles. Now watch. See how much longer it took? Yeah, that's that dreaded queuing. Are you watching the movie, it stops and you see the spinning circle? Because what it is, is I'm trying to shove so much data that it has to sit and wait to get through. Okay, so while we do that, we have to make a adjustment to our demonstration because we'll overflow the other bucket too. Justin, would you help me please? Yep. So we gotta dump some water back in. Keep going. Good. Again, please. Good. Okay, that should be yeah. enough. Now, there's a reason we have a towel on the table. Because you saw what happened when I had two devices, correct? Things started to back up. Well, what happens when we have somebody on Facebook, on Netflix, and playing games all at the same time? Now, take for example, single bottle, two bottles. This is what it would have taken to do three bottles. The problem is I try to do three bottles worth of work out of a single bottle connection. That's really how speed 
and bandwidth are related to what we do. Okay? So when the more devices, the more things we're doing, the more things are going to have to wait. So if the moral of the story is if you're having a slower internet connection, what you should probably do is turn some things off. Did I say that out loud? Turn things <laughs> off? Yes. Blasphemy. Right? Many times I've had to go downstairs and tell my daughter, do you mind getting off Netflix for a while? I have to work. Okay, so that's in wireless, and we'll get yeah. to that. So you, the, the question is, what do you think about turning the internet off at night? Yeah. Okay. Well, it depends. I mean, if you're worried about the neighborless, neighbors getting onto your wireless, you can simply secure down the wireless, and that'll prevent that from happening. Okay. Um, and we can talk offline. I can give you some real quick pointers on how to do that. Okay. Um, but the thing in, in today's internet connectivity, if you go back kind of old school like I am, we talk about dial-up days, right, where the only way you had a connection is you had to start it. Now, with any of the technology that I talked about, whether it's wireless, uh, which you know is the access point, whether it's on DSL, cable, or fiber, those are considered always on. In other words, you always have an active connection to the internet. Okay, Justin. All right. <clears throat> Next, we're going to talk about some network technologies, uh, specifically the technologies that transport your data from one end to the other. Um, fiber optic. Fiber is a big term now that you're hearing. Uh, fiber optic cable is just a just a glass or plastic medium that. Uh, that carries, uh, carries light across it, either emitted by a diode or laser or LED, uh, and a receiving piece of electronics on the other end decodes that information uh, and delivers it. This is a piece of uh, what we call direct burial fiber optic cable. This is the stuff that they're running in ditches. Um, I can actually, I can pass that around. We've got a small enough group. And you guys can check that out. I um, also have a piece of uh, indoor. This is the stuff that you would find in inside of a business. Um, some people may have it inside their homes. Um, that fiber is a little bit smaller there. <laughs> um, then we've got what, what everybody's kind of used to, the, the, the copper medium, category five, category six wire. Uh, this is the same stuff. I'm sure you guys all have ethernet cables at home. Um, this is basically what I did is I took a bunch of them and wrapped them together and, and cut the ends off. And what we can see inside there is we have our individual copper conductors. Um, and then I've taken the uh, shielding off those. So you can actually see the copper wire inside those. And uh, that's how most of the data inside your homes is actually going to be transmitted. The downside with copper over fiber is electromagnetic interference. Uh, if you run it, you know, if you're running next to fluorescent lighting or other electronics that, that are noisy, it can degrade your data quality. Um, the, other the other technology that I'm sure everybody's got, and we talked about a little bit earlier, is wireless. Wireless is really hard for me to give you a physical, tangible dem demonstration of, so uh, everybody just grab some wireless. So. <laughs> so um, as we start to kind of get over this, I just wanted to leave a couple things um, that are always important, because in order for us to help make the network work for you, we kind of need you to do some things also from your end to help protect you and your information. And one of them simply is do the right things, right? Have an antivirus protection, whether that's McAfee, AVG, Avast, Semantic, it doesn't matter to me. You need to protect your data because bad guys are out there and believe it or not, they may not necessarily want your data, you think I don't have anything. Attackers aren't always after your data, they're after your connection to the internet to use it for other purposes. Okay? So if they control your machine, then you now become a what's considered a bot in their network. And at night when you're sleeping and your computer's doing other things. Also, make sure your system is updated. If you're running Windows, make sure you have Windows Update turned on. Um, again, simply patching your machines and keeping them updated and antivirus solves the vast majority of your security issues on your computers. Um, another one that, that's been really big is don't open anything from someone that you don't know. Right? You get an email, hey, open this up, read this. I have no idea who you are, why would I do that? Okay, um, one of the famous ones, and that kind of goes along with the phishing schemes, okay? Let's say, for example, you have US Bank or JP Chase Bank or some other bank, and you get an email that says, we believe your email has been compromised. Click this link and enter your credentials. Don't ever do that, because that's really going to an attacker, and they're, they're grabbing those credentials, okay? Because now they know them, so now they're really gonna go to, to Chase or US Bank or somewhere else and empty out your account for you. So if you have extra money laying around, I'm sure there are plenty of great charities that would gladly take it. What if you're getting junk mail, basically? And I know we can scan it. Yep. Um, 
Yep. You know, is that the only way to protect it's, it's the best way because, you know, sometimes you'll see on the bottom, you know, click this link to unsubscribe or get out. Yeah. Uh, mixed feelings on that. My feeling is don't do it because what you just did is you just validated that's a legitimate active email account. So there's a side, I mean, some people do, some don't. If it's from a company that, that you know that you requested to be added to the list, then that's fine. If it's something you got, don't worry about it. Um, I love this one. I had to put this in because I saw a, a meme all right? If, it's, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. So we've all heard of the Nigerian scam, right? Ooh, the prince of Nigeria is in trouble. And then there's a grandma that says, I'll bake and send him some cookies. Because that's the best idea, okay? No, you don't have some long lost relative that won the lottery that needs to send you a million dollars in exchange. You send them 2,000 first to take care of it. Um, that just doesn't happen, okay? But yet every year people still do it and still do it. So again, same common sense. If it sounds too good to be true, it probably really is. Can I hit the next slide then, sir? All right. Thank you so much. Look forward to it. Mm -hmm.